Hi everyone, and welcome back to Develop Brighton Digital. I'm Chinsia, I'm a diversity and inclusion advisor at Splash Damage. Um, my job at Splash is um, to drive the DNI strategy, including changes in business processes to ensure they're as inclusive as possible, as well as considering diversity at all levels of the studio. Alongside this, I run an unconscious bias workshop for both the studio and the industry, and also help run employee resource groups. I've been working in DNI for about two years now, um, and I've recently won the Gene to Gaming Award. Um, today, I'd like to talk to all of you about the journey that we took at Splash Damage in order for us to start embracing diversity and inclusion. This was, and it still is, just that, a journey. I'm quite proud to see that when you look at the studio now, most of what you can see from us is the image of a studio that is progressive and genuinely cares about DNI. But we didn't start this way. So just kind of like take us back and explain who Splash Damage is. Um, Splash Damage is a studio that was created 19 years ago. It was created by three friends that were making mods together. They met each other through playing games together and kind of kept going as the studio grew. Um, and everything that we worked on was with the idea of creating lifelong friendships by making online games that champion team play. And you can see um, a bit of an overview of the kind of games we worked on over time. Um, so I wouldn't be able to talk about diversity and inclusion without um, speaking about why it's important and why it's something that we need to take on. Of course, like we should be taking this on because it's the right thing to do, but it's not the only reason. Um, it's really, really good for a studio to do that. And we've got some data here. Um, so at a diverse and inclusive company, employees reported that they were 80% more likely to believe that the company is high performing, 83% more likely to share ideas and develop innovative solutions, and 101% more likely to stay with the company, recommend it, and go the extra mile. So it, it's good for a studio. It will make your employees happier. And it's also the right thing to do. So overall, there's really no more excuses for us to not be doing diversity and inclusion. It will make your studio better. It will help people work together. It will make them happier to be working together. So this is something that you should be taking on. But so how did we start at Splash Damage? Um, this whole journey was started with employee resource groups or for short ERGs. As marginalized people in studios, especially with the kind of representation we have at the moment where you very much can be the minority, it's easy to feel isolated. So a few of us um, decided to create groups to connect with other employees like us. And so the first employee resource group that was born was the LGBTQ plus group. Um, shortly after that was Women at Splash Damage was created and BAME was created shortly after that. Um, and so what we did with employee resource groups is that we just got to chat. Um, we got to meet with people that are from the same, um, that are both from the same marginalized group as us, but also allies that wanted to help us. And just talked about the experience of being marginalized and the kind of thing that we would be hoping to see the studio doing more of. And it was a good way to kind of like get that conversation started. Um, and as a result of that, the people that were kind of like leading those employee resource groups um, decided to get together and start working on what we had called at the time a diversity steering group. Um, and yeah, so we, we got together and we kind of like talked about what the most important things to be doing were. And one of the big things that we realized is that um, the, one of the most important things to do with DNI is uh, bringing awareness. So that's kind of like the first thing that we took on. And we realized quite very, very quickly 
that it's difficult to start a conversation about inequity because it can be awkward and it can be difficult to talk about these things. Um, and so the Unconscious Bias Workshop started. Um, unconscious bias is a really good way to talk about this difficult subject, simply because it's non-accusative. The big takeaway from unconscious bias is that it's something you can't help and it affects everyone, regardless of if you're a minority or not. What, what it is is that you're being influenced by representation in media um, and in games and in advertising, like everything that you see around you influences how you kind of react to the things that you see on a day-to-day -day and how you how it impacts you at work. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that was the unconscious bias workshop. It was kind of talking about these things and talking about how um, things can impact you without realizing that they impact you with the idea that like, these are the cards you've been handed. These are the cards we've all been handed as a society effectively. And this is what you can do about it, how you can help with it. Um, and yeah, so that was that was a very like kind of easy way to bring in that conversation without you know telling people that they're thinking wrong or telling them that they're doing the wrong thing. It was like, this is what we're dealing with and these are the things that you can do to help with it. Um, and yeah, and so another big thing that we did around the same time was introducing meeting playbooks. And that was linked with the Unconscious Bias Workshop as it's one of the things that's advised to do. Um, and yeah, so that was a very big point for us to kind of like be bringing in DNI and being like, it's for everyone. Like this meeting playbook doesn't just help minorities. It doesn't just help my marginalized people. It helps everyone because you're all of a sudden you're looking at ways that make things easier for people from uh, that are um that, that are more quiet or things like that people that are more introvert because when you're an introvert it's more likely that when you go into a meeting if you're not aware of the subject of the meeting it's going to take you longer to kind of you know, come up with good answers and good decisions. And so these are the kind of things that we considered with the meeting playbook, ways for introverts and extroverts alike to be able to speak freely and to have a chance to say what they want to say. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was a big point because we're, we're an industry with a lot of introverts and the Unconscious Bias Workshop, as well as the meeting playbook, kind of addresses that and addresses ways to help everyone along the way and so this this is like this was a very good way for us to introduce these things without feeling like it was an attack or a risk or anything like that um but yeah something um that's really important and that we had to realize early on is that shifting a culture is slow it's not something that will go quickly there's no eureka moment there's no moment where you're like that's it, we did it, we fixed it. It's as you, you're going to be seeing things with a bit of distance. And that's when you're gonna be realizing that you've made victories, that you've made an impact. But as you're doing things, you might not be realizing that you're making changes as you're making them. And you might not know that it's happening while it's happening. Those small victories, those little things that you'll be seeing, those are the moments that you have to think of like, that's it, we're doing this. And I'm gonna be walking us through a few examples, but something that's kind of important to say is that my dream with my job is ultimately to make myself redundant. I want to get to a point where I don't need to exist with this role, but that's the thing with d and there isn't a clear goal, there isn't a moment where you're like, if I do these things, I will have done DNI. It's something that will evolve with your studio and that will shift as your studio is becoming more progressive. And, and you'll, be, you'll be bringing more of these things along, but you also have more things to start considering. Um, but yeah, um, here's a few examples of moments of times where I could really tech stock and start realizing that we'd made a difference. Um, just a few photos that I'm going to go through. Um, these were two different talks. In the first one, we had um, the ever amazing Leon from Balance Patch coming in to talk about how to be an ally um, for Trans Awareness Week. 
Um, and then we brought in people to talk about the experience of being a person of color in the games industry and all that kind of evolved. Um, we also had a few, like we, we've been trying to kind of do a lot of events. And so those are like a few photos from it. But yeah, so the, that example there, um, those were moments for me to kind of start taking stock and being like, these are victories. Um, this was for International Women's Day, the first photo, um, where we brought in someone to do manicures with the idea of normalizing taking care of yourself for everyone. Um, we did that along with talks and workshops and, and other things that were kind of like bringing awareness of the struggles that women still face in our society. Um, but this one was more of like, you know, a relaxing light thing. And, and having Rich, our CEO, pictured there, um, like coming in and showing by example that it's okay for a man to take care of himself and to, to have a manicure and to just embrace that part of, you know, relaxing and, and doing things for yourself. Those were important things because that's what we want to embrace. We want everyone to be able to embrace themselves and to be able to be okay with who they are. Um, the photo with all the post-it notes comes from our um, mental health awareness week that we had again back in the studio. Um, and, and this was just like, we had a little post-it note, a little, a little board that everyone could put post-it notes in and just kind of talking about the ways that they uh, cope with stress and what kind of things they do to help themselves cope. Um, did a bake off for Pride last year. And we also had someone coming in for World Culture Day to do henna, but these were like, Again, they were like little, they're, they're impactful photos. There were little moments of victories that came from, you know, a lot of work kind of organizing these events and doing them for the first time and, and coming in and being like, this is normal. This is what we do in the studio now. You can be yourself. Um, a few more photos. We, the, this, this group photo um, was probably one of my um, biggest moments of kind of, realizing everything that we've done along the way. Um, so we had for Pride again last year, we had a, at the end of it, we had a come as you are day. And so the idea is that everyone would come as they feel they truly are. Um, and one of the people in the studio decided that day to come for the first time as fan presenting. Um, and it, it was kind of like their moment to be coming out and that, that was like, looking back at it, this was such a touching moment because all of a sudden we, we, we'd we made the studio open for people to be unashamedly who they are and to be proud of who they are. And this was, this, that was the idea of that event. That was the idea of that celebration and seeing someone embracing it and, and being able to, to just, yeah, accept who they are and show to everyone in the studio that this was them. It, it was like a really, really touching moment of, of realizing that, you know, we're making an impact. We're actually making the studio that we work for a better place for everyone. And that uh, you, you can be yourself in here. And yeah, looking back at it, it's probably one of my favorite kind of moments to look back at. Um, Going shortly into the photo at the bottom there, this was the reception for International Women's Day. And it's something when we were in the studio that we would do often, we would just redecorate reception to try and make it as, you know, themed as possible. And it, it's, it's a, it seems like a silly little thing, but realistically, what you're doing is that as people are coming into the studio, they're seeing these things and it's like, it's a normal part of their day to day as they're walking in. And that really helps with that normalization with that, you know, bringing in trust and bringing in people to kind of like see that and think this is normal. This is what we do. This is just a normal thing in the studio. And, and with, it was like little decorations, but on top of that, we, as you can see, there were like lots of photos of um, significant women in history. And so that's, that struck conversations. We got to talk about, you know, who these women were, etc. And those were like, again, you, you walk into the studio, first thing you see is that, and it was the same for Pride, it was the same for World Culture Day. It's just like, it, it became a common thing that you would see when we were doing these events in the studio. And that's how it becomes normal. Um, and then moving on to now with lockdown, um, 
it would have been very easy for us to just stop doing those events and stop kind of like supporting these things. But it's super important to, and it was really important for us to talk about the fact that we're not fair weather supporters, that it didn't matter that we were all working from home and we couldn't celebrate these things together. We could still celebrate them together just differently. And, um, so yeah we kept putting on events we had pride um we just recently did black history month and um we did world culture day and we we have had a lot of events like centralized around mental health that being a very important thing um as we went into lockdown we had to make sure that people knew that we understood as a studio that it's normal to be impacted by these things, that it's normal that your mental health is going to suffer because it's a stressful situation. It's stressful for everyone. And this is not just working from home, it's being at home while working. And so we we introduced a few things, including um, weekly checkup with managers and their report so that they could talk about how they were impacted and how the mental well-being was impacted. And we would make sure that with our communication that we do daily, that our emails kind of like reminding people to, you know, take your time to speak to someone if you need help. And, and yeah, these things um, just became, again, normalized in the studio. And, and it was all about from the first event with it in the studio to going into lockdown, normalizing that talk about mental health and about mental well-being and letting people know that if you need, if you need to be off sick, if you're not feeling well from a mental health perspective, that it is as bad as having a cold or feeling physically unwell. And so kind of like, you know, encouraging people to take that time for themselves and, and to take mental health day, that it is normal and it is okay. And, and we all have those moments where we just need extra help to cope, especially right now. So yeah, this was, this was a big thing and, and it continues to be a big thing. And just bringing all of these together, like that, that kind of like those events happening and, and making them like, for Pride this year remotely, we had drag bingo, for example. And like you do that. And then also at the same time, we also had um, a panel for, from people to talk about like what it's like being queer in video games. And yeah, you, you kind of like put these things together and um, and just make it normal because you've got like the, the silly fun events and then you've got the more serious events talking about that kind of like impact. Um, and you you give people a chance to get involved and and to kind of create that awareness and and give them a chance to be visible allies. Um, and as a result of that, as a result of everything we've done and seen, we've also now got people um, talking about wanting to join the studio because of our DNI statements, because of what they're seeing from us doing. And that's another big victory: the fact that we're now giving people or, or showing people what we are as a studio and how inclusive and progressive we are and making them want to join us as a result of that. That's that's a big victory. That's a big moment of, again, realizing the impact that we've had. But um, we didn't do all of this without mistakes. It's, it's, it, it's completely normal to make mistakes. And, and we had a lot of learnings along the way. I think our, one of our biggest learnings um, is that we didn't try bringing leadership with us at the start. We let ourselves, really a bunch of marginalized people, take the rein. We had to bring leadership in later. While they supported us, like they were fully supportive and aware of what we were doing, we didn't communicate early on that we needed their vocal support across the studio, that we needed them to show up and, and support us from a, a, a clear perspective. We didn't communicate what our needs were from those marginalized people to leadership. Um, what it also meant is that some of the cultural changes took longer simply because they could have been interpreted as just a few of us, marginalized people, pushing an agenda rather than doing something supported for the studio, supported by and for the studio. And 
yeah like when when you're just doing something kind of like you know trying to bring awareness to dni and you're marginalized it can come across as just you trying to advance your career and and so that that made some of those changes longer so if you're at the start of that journey or of a similar journey um speak to your leadership bring them on board ask them for their vocal support and visible allyship people from marginalized group shouldn't be doing the work by themselves they should be there to tell leadership what they need rather than taking on the work of bringing awareness and teaching people around them by themselves because it's a lot of um, of emotional labor that you're going to be taking on if leadership is there and knows what you're doing and supports you then when it becomes too much they can help you they can help you kind of move forward and and also if you are burning out if you're feeling that it's just all too much for you they can come along and help you with that the next big one is that you know it's important to listen to your staff a big example of an oversight we had was with one of our benefits. For several years now, we had a really great benefit where a hairdresser comes into the studio once a week, not going to people's homes, um, and just goes to cut people's hair. Um, what we didn't know and what we had not considered to check at all at the time was that this hairdresser doesn't have experience cutting up for hair. This meant that we just offered a benefit that was great, but uninclusive. Um, and through the trust we built with the ERGs, with the events we did, with talking about DNI as the norm and just kind of like that, that change in culture, what that meant is that someone from the studio was able to raise that as a problem. We acknowledged our mistake and moved on to fix it. It's okay to make mistakes. It, it happens. It's normal to make mistakes. But as long as you can embrace that you have made a mistake and work with the people impacted to fix it, that has so much more of an impact than just pretending you didn't make the mistake or just like trying to advance and, and kind of like keep going as if this wasn't a mistake. Just accept that you're going to do things wrong, but work with the people that it impacts to fix it and to do that for as best for them. And the last but very much not least learning that we took from that is that you can't make everyone happy. You can't take this journey thinking that everyone will be happy and that you, you, you're you going to make this perfect for absolutely everyone. We still work in an industry where talking about DNI is seen by some as political. If you set yourself on the journey to make absolutely everyone happy, not only are you are likely to burn yourself out, but you, you're going to think that you're failing. You're going to think that you're just constantly making failures and not really advancing and that's not going to keep you going and, and it, it can be very difficult if you think this way so just accept that accept that you like it's important to have that empathy and you know to try to talk to these people to understand what their concerns are and to kind of like educate them on that end but if they don't want to listen you can't help them you can't make them happy and sometimes you just have to accept that it's how it's going to be. It's not, it's just not going to be for everyone. Some people simply don't care and it's okay not to care about DNI. You don't have to absolutely care about it. Um, but yeah, just, just accept that. So my key takeaways, um, don't take this journey along. Find a group of people that will take the journey with you, that will, you know, help do that. Bring leadership along with you, bring everyone, if you can, along with you, if they want to, if they want to join you. Educate, educate, educate. Bring in the data, always keep that in mind. We've got so much great resources nowadays from, from the Yuki census to raise the game, the pledge from Yuki. There's so many great resources around that you can use to educate yourself and then educate the people around you. Make sure that you do that. Make sure that you keep the business cases, the data as to why it's important to do these things in mind and just kind of try to educate the people around you. And then remember what you've done, especially the positives. 
keep a list of them, like keep, keep them somewhere. It might seem a bit silly to just have a list of all the good things you've done. But if this was anything else, you would have credits of the games you've worked on. You would have potentially a portfolio with lots of great art. This is the same. You need that list of positives, of things that you've achieved to keep you going. So I like to finish these talks with a little quote, and I decided to do the same here. Um, this is a quote from the great inspiration, Gabriela Montez, um, saying that, yeah, everyone is special in their own ways, and we make each other strong. Thank you for watching.